Good morning. I'm Chuck Jaffe, and I am delighted to be here. See so many uh, friends and familiar faces, as well as some people who will become enamored as I am of this process. I think uh, it's exciting for FIRE because um, HL7 gave birth to this um, only eight years ago, and we'll be celebrating a rather young anniversary considering how important this has become on a global scale. Saturday evening, I came back from Korea where there was a pan-Asian event. Virtually all of the uh, countries participated. And the program was entitled Asia on Fire. Uh, from the very start, Fire has been about community. It's been about collaboration. And for us, we're delighted to have uh, shared in this collaboration with Firely, who's uh, brought their program to North America. And we think it'll be the first of many such. But we really owe a lot of success in this community to many of the people who started the process, like the Argonaut Project uh, four years ago, that realized they needed to form a uh, coalition of uh, the willing EHR vendors and health systems that wanted to support both fire development and more importantly, fire implementation. More recently, the Da Vinci Project uh, comprised of uh, the payer community and CMS. Uh, along the way, there have been uh, numerous agencies in the federal government in the US and elsewhere who brought their support to this important uh, process. Uh, the VA Lighthouse Project was announced earlier this year that will provide veterans with not only their health information, but information about all their benefits through a uh, FIRE API gateway. And other federal agencies, one of which will be uh, making an important announcement later this week. Uh, the private sector has brought their support, and we'll hear from them at this meeting. And I think, uh, for me, it was an exciting journey to hear Apple announce that they had embedded the Argonaut implementation guide uh, for FIRE into their operating system, and it will be the centerpiece for uh, their health kit and their patient-oriented apps. So without further ado, I welcome everyone, and I'd like to introduce my colleague, friend, and one of the leaders of the FIRE community, Ewat Kramer. So let's see if this mic's working. Yes, good morning. It's kind of a tradition to bring something Dutch to the start of the Dev Days as we've seen them in, in the EU. And bringing my bicycle in was a bit hard. Uh, this seemed to be, you know, there's a lot of Dutch stuff that you really can't take over the border here in the US. Uh, so I thought this was the safe bet. Um, so welcome all to uh, the Fire Developer Days, the first Fire Developer Days in um, the US. So I don't know, oh yeah, you're seeing, so it's kind of, ah, you're seeing my slides over there, right. Um, it's really, you know, Chuck already told, uh, told, mentioned the word community and this is really about community. Um, getting to Fire Dev Days is becoming part of a community that has been working with the FIRE standard, the FIRE exchange standard as we know it, and bringing it to life. Because the FIRE standard in itself is a bunch of web pages, right? It's about the people here that turned it into software, and that's, been, that's, that's, that's a great experience. It's the experience that we're having here. Here, uh, we're all being developers, and this is some of the rare occasions where we as developers are not put away in some dark cellar or dark hotel room. No, instead we have this wonderful view here today and light all around us, not a hot tin roof to work under. And uh, that's, that's um, part of what we want to show here. Um, 
we're developers, we bring, this, this, we bring fire alive, and it's all about community. And that's why I want to ask the traditional question that I ask at the beginning of each developer days. Who for who here, by show of hands, is this the first time that they are at a fire community event like this? Wow, that's quite a lot. And so you'll be learning a lot. And you know, it might be confusing. There's a lot of new things going on. One of the new things might be the thing that we all take for granted. It's the word HL7 there. You just saw the CEO of HL7. But I bet a lot of people new here, they've become part of the FIRE community, and they're wondering, what's the HL7 bit before it? HL7, uh, the HL7 that, that Charles is leading is is also a platform, is also a community. It was a pre-existing community of people working in healthcare standards. And HL7 uh, was kind enough, very at the beginning of the FIRE movement, to support it, take us on. And so that's why we're now uh, HL7 FIRE here and as a, as a big community. And there's so little around you, all these people, a lot of the people around you are actually working every day to make the FIRE specification uh, even better. Years ago, when we started uh, working on the fire specification uh, with Graham and Lloyd, Graham already said a, a specification without people is nothing. And I think if you look at every important working spec, there is a vibrant community around it. And um, that's, the, that's the most important thing for me uh, for Dev Day. So I want all you people here, new and joining us for the first time at Dev Days, to feel welcome here at this community. And, um, we're here, all these people, whoa, these people in the yellow shirts, uh, to help you out if you feel lost, if there are too many acronyms that you don't know about, if you don't know where to go, just, you know, find any of these shirts and you can cry on our shoulders. We'll, we're there to help. Feel welcome. Um, so, fire, the first fire of days was actually in 214 in, in Amsterdam. That, that's also why I bring something from the Netherlands every time. Uh, we started doing it humbly in the office of, uh, of uh, Firely, of the company that I, I, I work for. Um, and uh, one of the great things is that they offered their office space to do the first two dev days. And then we got way too big and we grew to 16. We had 260 participants. So that was when the community really, really took off. And you can see that now, 217, we're at 380 people. And I'm, of course, thrilled that we're at that number. But we could have been even higher. You're the lucky ones here. There was a waiting list of 70 people who wanted also to be here today. But you made it here in this wonderful room. And uh, that's what we're going to do. Now, when I was creating this picture, I was looking for the Boston flag. Now, I'm totally assuming you don't know all of all US flags belonging to the US cities. I didn't. So I found this flag as being the Boston flag, but it's actually not. This was a redesign because this is the actual Boston flag. Interesting. Blue with a lot of Latin and so on. And then I started Googling other flags of US cities. Um, New York, LA. Hey, we're developers here. You know, we're good at detecting patterns and, 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 and generaliza making generalizations out of it. Let's go on. What happens? Um, Houston, I think. Phoenix. Philadelphia. San Antonio. The list goes on and on. We do see a pattern here. All these flags. I didn't know, but I just wanted to tell you. All these, it seems to be an American tradition to put, um, to put a solid colored background with a, you know, with this seal on it. It's actually uh, interesting to know that um, there is a group of people calling faciologists who study flags, and they have detected that this is an American tradition. I didn't know about it. I learned something while making these slides, and this is the first thing you've learned today at Dev Days. Okay. So now for the serious stuff. Most of the time, I'm just doing the logistics, and I will do that again here, too. Uh, I told you already, the crew and the team are well recognizable by these yellow shirts. Um, they're up there as well, neatly aligned. And there is, well, you met, you met uh, the crew also at RegDesk. Uh, more or less, if you have questions about your registration and logistics, 
you go to registration desk. If you have any other questions about fire or related questions, or as I said, if you feel lost, or where do I need to go, everything is new, what's interesting for me? Just ask any one of the yellow shirts and they will point you in the right direction. And since most of you here are new, let me take a little bit of time to go over a day at Dev Days. So the opening is at 8.30, you made that. Um, and normally, but not today, we start at 9 sharp with the first set of tutorials. Today is easy, but let me think. Friday, the morning after the social event, will be harder to be there at 9. Um, so 9 o'clock start of the tutorials, and at 8.30 I'm already here uh, presenting an update. So every morning I'll do a, a short update about what's happened and what's going to happen in the day uh, before us. So the exception is today, because right after me, uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll have a presentation by John Halemka. So each tutorial is 40 minutes, and now the most important part of the slides, after these 40 minutes, we have 10 minutes to switch to a different place, wherever you want to go. There is a morning and an afternoon coffee break as well, planned, uh, but there's drinks all through the day. So uh, if you want to, you know, if you want to run your software one more time and you miss coffee break, that was always happened to me, there is drinks all the time. Don't worry about that. They will generally be there, there in that, in that you know, to me, the right uh, corner over, um, over there. Um, lunch is at 12.30, and that will be upstairs. So in the mezzanine floor, as we call it. The mezzanine floor over there is where all the hands-on are. It's also where you have an even better view over the stuff behind me. The program is full, but we do have slots for birds of a feather. And you should try to watch out for them because these are sometimes some of the most interesting parts about Dev Days. These are spontaneous events that come up because someone asks, why is this stuff like that in the spec? We should change it. And then we're like, okay, let's, you know, let's meet about that. Let's discuss. And many times this will result in a change in the fire specification. So these are very interesting discussions um, to follow. And if you have an idea for a birds of a feather session, just contact any of the staff or at registration desk and we can maybe find a room for you. And we will announce it as well. Um, so a day at Dev Days is a lot of tutorials, but there's also the, uh, the room upstairs where all the tables are. This is where you can put down your laptop and work with uh, people that are interested in the same thing. So all these tables are organized uh, around tracks, mezzanine um, over there, up there. Once the day is over, we have, uh, we have some amusement for you as well. Tonight, amusement is hobby, which means continuing working. Uh, we'll have, I, I am I'm being promised that we'll have really nice food today that will be up there again on the mezzanine level. And so we can continue hacking here until 8 o'clock. I know it's like afternoon, but yeah, after that you'll have to find your own spot to continue working if you want. And on Wednesday uh, is the social event. So I will tell you way more about the social event uh, tomorrow morning, but for now, Wednesday evening, uh, you're booked. We have something for you, uh, something to enjoy with all of us. And Thursday, well, that's... That's, uh, well, it's a two, 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 yeah. Thursday eve afternoon, we'll have the farewell drinks to wave each other goodbye. I mean, after three days, this will feel like home, and you're, you know, we're all your, our mates, so we will ha we'll have share farewell drinks, shed a tear, and say until next year. So how to know what's going on? So first, there is that paper booklet. You received the paper booklet when you, when you got in here, and as, you know, it's paper, it's always out of date. So you already have an A5 paper with some changes. And as you could expect, we already have changes on top of that. That will go on, you know, it's a continuous process. It's like software. So the best thing you can do is uh, go to that link over there, firedevdays.com. You have found that link before because you registered there. Uh, and the Boston schedule is on it. We'll make sure that that schedule is kept up to date, up to the second. So just keep an eye on that. Failing that, all the changes will be on these two big screens here next to me as well. And behind the reg the reg desk, there are some very fancy backlit signs which have the latest written down, uh, you know, with pen. It feels even more last minute than an updated website. And 
stuff like pens, but it's, it will carry the same, the same changes. And so there are already two changes, not on your paper stuff, so you could check it out um, over there. Then the last bullet here, most frequently asked questions. I can't see all. There's, there are too many tutorials. Can I see the other tutorials some way, somehow? Can we repeat the tutorials? No, but they're all recorded. And after Dev Days, you'll receive a link with a password um, so you can watch them, all of them, as many times as you want. All right. So the hands-on sessions, again, are upstairs. Um, the tables are all clearly marked with, uh, with a little sign. And uh, many of the tutorial tracks have exercises that you can try out if you want to uh, work with the materials at firedevdays.com slash boston slash exercises. And we make sure that the tutorial speakers will join you at those tables if you have any questions. Now, the single most important thing is not on the first slide. It's the Wi-Fi password. Uh, it's actually printed incorrectly in your paper there because it says the password is Dev Days. Well, that's too modest. It's Dev Days, exclamation mark. So uh, if you're not online yet, Dev Days, exclamation mark, is what you need to get online. Then if you want to connect to fire servers, I've created a bit.ly link for you. It actually has way more than just a list of servers. So this is a list of servers of people present here. So to the server authors that bring fire servers, you can put your server address there. And to people working with fire clients, those are the addresses where the authors are walking around here somewhere. So please try out their servers and see if we can actually connect, because that's the whole point. Uh, but that link, that bit.ly link, also has other useful links, like a link to our Zulip chat. Um, who here, by Show of hands again, is not familiar with the Fire Zulip chat. Ha, huh, good. So this is all nice, but once you get back home, you start to feel lonely. Uh, our Zulip channels are 24 hours a day um, community channels where you can ask questions and most of the time get answers within the hour. It's a bit of a fire hose, so if you're not working on fire and you think, oh, I'll just keep up a little bit up to date, no way. By the time I will be back home from this event, I'll, you know, there'll be a thousand messages from people asking questions and giving answers. It's really, really active, but it has all the wonderful information. So if you go to the bit.ly link, there's also a link to the Zulip, um, the Zulip chat. Then the general setup. So a little bit of the logistics here. This obviously is the great room, also known as the main room. Also used for weddings. If you go to the website of this beautiful building, you see all kinds of nice things you can do with this place, from concerts to weddings. So if you still have plans, you might consider this. It's a good building. Um, and if you, ah, yes. So this is, this is always a little bit of Navigation, so it's behind my back. So now to my right, yeah, is the coffee. Um, so where it says blah is me. And you came in at the red arrow over there. And that's also where you get out to the rooms called harbor side and city side. So that's through that door. Obviously, if you take the stairs up here, you get to the mezzanine loft where the, uh, where the hacking is. And the circle is around the area where you have drinks uh, all day. Then this is upstairs, so this is where the coffee is, dinner tonight, and lunch as well. And then we have four rooms called city side and harbor side. There are two rooms on that side, unsurprisingly called harbor side, and then there are two rooms on that side called city side, and there is a logic to them. They, they, they didn't reuse numbers. They actually numbered one, two, three, and four. So there's no harbor side two and city side two nodes. One, two, three, and four. And the odd ones are the rooms on this side, and the even ones are the rooms on, on, on the other side. You don't need to know. Uh, all you need to know is get back out there, and they know that city side is on that side, and harbor side is on that side. One, two, three, and four. 
But if you're looking for patterns, which I did, I noticed that the odd numbers are on, on this side of the room. Um, about the connected font space. During educational sessions, you can, of course, leave your laptop there, but it, this is an unguarded room. I mean, we're all there, so you can ask your neighbor or just trust everyone here, but it's an unguarded room. Um, I would surely take your stuff at the end of the day. Well, that's, I don't think I will really need to say, but... And on Friday, if you need to move out and you have your trolley here or anything, we have storage space available so you can uh, bring your trolley, though the slide says limited room available. Uh, smoking is only allowed outside, which I suppose means 34, 31 floors down on the street. I'm, I'm not sure, but um, that's a way to discourage smoking. And um, in case of fire for all the green signs, well, that's in, that's in Europe. Here it's the exit signs, I guess. Yeah. Highlights for today. So uh, what's the program looking like uh, today? Um, at 9 o'clock, but I'm actually finishing a little bit early, that's good, um, we have a talk uh, from John Halemka about emerging innovations in healthcare. Um, you all know uh, John. I, I found a picture from him on the internet. Here's John. And this shows that John's been with innovation and technology for a long, long time. This is actually a 10-year-old John winning the science fair in fourth grade with his home-built Fendergraf generator back in 1972. Uh, so John's been, uh, well, he said it himself, a technology nerd there for a long, long time. So I'm really looking forward to what he's going to tell us about emerging innovations in healthcare. And afterwards, uh, there's always something weird going on at Death Days. From three to seven, so 1,500 to 1,900 hours in Euro speak, that's 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. here, um, photo booth with drinks so you can make kind of weird pictures to show that you were really here and make fun of yourself. If you want, you can, you can ask me for these and put these on the pictures as well. They're size 44. And there are drinks available as well. Um, finally, all of this here hasn't been, wouldn't be possible without our sponsors, uh, especially our, spo our host sponsor, uh, InterSystems, who made sure that we could use this beautiful venue where we are here at. So uh, thanks to them and uh, our gold and sil silver sponsors, Allscripts, Everent, PCHA, and Cerner. If you want to, and we'd really like you to, Twitter or say anything about Dev Days, please use these Twitter tags. And of course, you can follow us for the last details um, on this one. So, that's enough logistical details for now, I think. So we can just sit back, relax, and enjoy what John is going to tell us. Well, welcome to John. <laughs>